Hi, this is Alexa Hampton. This is 52 Weeks of Design Live. This is an unusual day. And um, in only in that we usually do it on Thursdays. And today we are welcoming somebody back into the, um, no, I'm doing the wrong thing. Back into the, the fold in terms of uh, social media. Hold on, I'm trying to invite her. Again, we go through this every time. Why? Wow. She's there though. Mm -hmm -hmm. Hey, Danielle, can you, okay, there we go, request to join? Mm -hmm. Okay, nope. This whole new go live in a room thing is very confusing to me. Okay, so I am still at my pop-up shop and I am very, oh no, it says update to chat with Facebook accounts. No, thank you. Um, I'm still in my pop-up shop at 200 Lex, the New York Design Center. And Danielle, do you, oh, is that how we do it? Everything has changed again. Nope, that's comment. That's turning it backwards. That's sharing a photo. This is sent. And I should put this back so you're not looking underneath the lampshade. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Am I sideways? You are sideways. <laughs> I can be sideways. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, I see we've me. both been to the same hairdresser. Girl. Right? It was a requirement. <laughs> it totally was. I mean, not that there would be anything other than blonde growing out of our heads, right? Of never. Don't our dark brows are nothing. Don't look at my edges and don't look at my brows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm. I, I have my barrier, so I am good. Hi, I am so happy to meet you. Um, I am a fan. I love oh. your work, and I am so excited to hear more about you first. Why did, why did you do your detox? By the way, I apologize for what I'm going to be drinking. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I, I can't compete energetically, but I'll, this I'll is, rely on this my is coffee. A, this is a new thing. I'm just trying it today and it's not bad, but it's, I know it's disgusting. So um, did you just, you wanted to clean up and, or did you watch the documentary? No, it, it wasn't really intentional. Um, my husband broke his foot in the summer. Oh, no. So on top of COVID, kids at home, and I have now a newly turned three-year-old and a soon-to-be five-year-old. So it was after that, then the summer, I get to like some level of normal. And my husband breaks his foot. And it just became, you know. Then I you have to do everything. I had to do he well, planned it. everything and he try to work <laughs> and so you know like doing little pictures of my crazy life yeah, you were busy not, yeah you were busy. I was busy and then you know there was a little bit of like keep my head down focus on the work you know um there sometimes when you're not in the best kind of emotional place sure. watching everybody else's like pretend life that looks so amazing and perfect just not good for you <laughs> You know, like, it just wasn't great for me at that time. So I just well, said, you, you know what? You can always be rest assured that my life is some sort of messy pile. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm the person uh, speaking to you. Well, um, I have to say, I admire people who can share through the mess. You know, I just, uh, I feel like I'm. Yeah, I'm it's, that, a, I'm, it, it's a whole it's a it's a skill. It's, just, it's like, really, I admire it. But uh, that was a mess. I just was like, let's just keep. Keep this to myself. Focus we can on the put work. this off. Yeah. Um, I'll be back in the spring. <laughs> exactly. When, yeah. when new birth, springtime, exactly. all good. Exactly. Um, tell me how you started out because it's very exciting and dynamic. Well, it, it's a uh, life is a winding road and I sort of follow the winding path. I, I never had a direct, like a vision of being or doing anything specific. Sure. So um, I was a dancer. I danced professionally after college. Wow. I 
taught school after college. Uh, I taught first grade for two years. I taught dance in public schools. So I was always in this like art, artist creative mode. Um, and I was living in San Francisco at the time. And then I just had a like a meltdown where I was like, I need like a career. <laughs> I need to have something where I actually like make money, you know, yeah. and, and can- And you're um... just decorating. <laughs> What was I thinking? See? <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, it's, I went to Brazil for like three weeks, meditated on the beach, and I, I oh, just had really, a little eat, eat, pray, love. Totally. And I, and I was like, what am I good at? What do I love? Mm -hmm. And what will I not tire of? I mean, I always have loved to shop and spend money. Bam. Yeah. Problem solving was like great. And I like people. Yeah. And so it's and you had good of taste. Like, how did you know you had good taste? You've done so, enough of your own houses? Yeah, no, it's from my mom. So I grew up in a Tudor in Queens, um, and we were always doing stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I moved my bed back and forth every six months. We yeah. painted. I mean, I did everything with her. I went to Fortune Off on the weekends with her and looked at 8,000 rugs. and was like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. You know, I was like, and yeah. she listened to me. She, she was like, this is valuable. So from there, and, and I learned later that my grandfather was really into antiques, my mother's father. Mm. So I have some of his pieces still in my home oh, to this day. So I think it amazing. was sort of like a pass down thing. Um, but we just like, our home was always our sanctuary. Uh, and she just melded modern and like African art and things from her travels in a way that was sort of effortless with antiques. Um, yeah, it's the dream. Just, like, it's the, yeah, at least it's the American design dream. Exactly. Um, exactly. Since, you know, we're so free to choose whatever we yeah. want. And I would watch her like save and save and, and go put like a little money down on a table and a little money eat. She was a nurse. She, so she wasn't that making money. Is great. She was a nurse and taking you to Fortune Off to look for the rod. So it was, yeah. she was shopping for you guys. Yeah. Ah. Well, during the sales, you know, Fortune right, of Off always said. Of course, right. um, but that's also really good. That's a really good model to yeah. show. Like, if it, I also think mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in even if I don't always pay attention to it, that if you can't afford it, don't buy it. Yeah. Or don't buy it if you can't afford it. So I love the idea that you were seeing her put a little away, put a little. That's such a good example. Yeah, it was, and I really, she really bought things that were meaningful to her. Mm -hmm. So our whole, like, there was a lot of kind of stuff in our house, but it was all had a story or it, it just had everything. It was like the Marie Kondo before that whole yeah. thing, right? And yeah. it wasn't the, it wasn't the neat. Joy version. sparking <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, but it was really like things that made her happy. And seeing that and knowing she had this little like corner of the earth yeah. was very inspiring to me. And that all of those pieces were meaningful. Yeah. That it wasn't just, this would look good with the sofa. Exactly. Um, so, so you had this epiphany. And, uh -huh. and how, did you, how did you start out? So I went to design school. You know, I, uh, I guess I'm from that generation of like, you go to school. <laughs> you know, you no, I think go. that, and I think that's now, you know, you, that is the path. You must. Right? You yeah, must. I, I think you have, I mean... I just like my time hand drafting. I, I just like remember design school so well. I just loved every minute of it. Um, we did like two seconds of CAD. That's how long ago that was. Uh -huh. uh, all hand drafting. And so I did that. And then I decided to come back east. So that was in LA. I came back mm -hmm. home to New York because I was like, look, all these like big firms are in New York. Yeah. Um, and then literally I went through the AD 100 list and I got to Irvin and Fle I called every designer, got wow. to Irvin and Fleming, and they gave me an internship. And since my father was in that era, mm -hmm. you know, I love their work. I mean, I don't think you have to be in that era, but to appreciate it, but I was certainly aware of them as like amazing, yeah. uh, an amazing firm. So how long and, were you there? You know, with, with that, I was there for almost five years. Mm -hmm. um, I was so sort of the right hand to Keith um, I worked with Tom Fleming on a bunch of projects. And the thing about them was it wasn't my natural aesthetic. And that's so valuable, right? Well, so, I think unless you're like a Duke, 
it's not gonna be <laughs> your natural it's not gonna be our natural aesthetic no matter what exactly. like i was coming from la where everything was like bali and like yeah. you know neutral linens and yeah and to go to like chinese lacquer dining rooms and like star albert hadley stars all over the place yeah. and you know, all of these wallpapers with borders that we had to explain for 10 hours to the hangar, like, bring the border up but, right, and right. grow brain ribbon, all this stuff. I was like, this is crazy. But and it's the, the office, best way to come into it because that's yeah. like that maxing out every detail. You can always scale back. You can always once scale you've mastered back. it. Exactly. Every curtain, you know, beautiful, like, I love that. detail. It was, it was amazing. And the, the most important thing I learned is... I would see these schemes in the office and be like, this is crazy. Like, I would never do this. Um, and then I would get to installation and be like, this is the best feeling room yeah. I've ever been in. Um, it just, Keith especially, he just had this way of like, it just felt so good. Even though it was like all this stuff and chintz and leopard, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, but it just like you got in the space and I've carried that with me. Like, I want it to look good in the picture, of course. I mean, we all do, but if the rooms don't feel good, yeah. it's kind of like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly our clients will not be right. happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, that's the dream. And that yeah. is such a, that's more than knowing how to put a room together. That's something ineffable. It's something that you yeah. can't put your finger on. That's super important. It's, it's that soulful quality that mm -hmm. is just um, magic. It's magic. Yeah. And when you get it, you're, you know it. And I'm at the point where it's like, when I don't get it, I just say, this isn't it. Like, we're going to do it until we get it. But, you know. I totally. And sometimes I feel like there, we have an expression in the office, when, when a scheme is really great, mm -hmm. and we're, you know, we're doing scheme options for the client, and there's like always, not always, but you hope. Um, there's frequently one scheme that every fabric will work with. And we're trying yeah. to put it in the other schemes. We're trying to make other options, but this scheme can take it all. That's like, the one. It's so mm -hmm. that good. Um, so we say to each other that, uh, the, you know, God is decorating again. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like he's, he's putting absolutely. it together. I mean, absolutely. I, like the creative process, it's just so magic. It's just about that tapping in and kind of getting yourself out of the way. So all of that can come through. So when did you know you were ready to go uh, to leave? Because that's, that's a critical piece. I didn't. Um, what happened was I had worked on a golf club, um, a golf course clubhouse with, with Tom Fleming. Uh, he left the job and the, the guy who was in charge came to me and said, like, can you do it? You know everything. Like, you've been the one, like, yeah, managing this whole thing, right? Because I was kind of the number two and I was shopping and doing all the stuff. And uh, with my boyfriend at the time, we like, he, he was a financial guy. So I was like, okay, let's figure this out. Can I do That's this? Cool. And he, he said, you know, like what you're going to make on this, you'll do better than you would with your salary at that point. And then from there you can build. Of yeah. course, that was right before the 2008 crash. So maybe... <laughs> It was a little crazy and intense, but I wouldn't but, trade it. But you had that project going on. Yeah. So I think that the whole, I mean, everybody who's a decorator or designer understands that it's all timing. Every time one Absolutely. of these bad hiccups happen, mm -hmm. it's like playing musical chairs. You just hope that you're in process on a job mm -hmm. when one of these huge seismic shifts, mm -hmm. shifts happen. Oh because exactly. that will hold you over till things settle. Yeah, that's what happened during COVID for me. I I'm like was knee deep in a project and it was Good. a private home. So we could still have like still do mm -hmm. kind of small things incrementally. We couldn't do a full, you know, construction crew, but we could do little things here and there. Yeah. Um, and so it just kept me like in the loop. Yeah, that it's it's critical. It's yeah. critical. Um, okay, so you went and you did that. What made you decide to branch out to TV? Oh, gosh, another... How long, how long were you on your own before you did that? So I was on my own, I guess, four years. Mm -hmm. Was it more than that? Five years? Yeah. On my own. 
And I had been through like this crazy economic downturn. I was back at home with my mom in my 30s feeling like, oh. <laughs> so I, I totally intend to make my children live with me into their 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I tell my kids all the time, okay, you're big enough. Like, yeah. No, mine are not allowed to leave ever. <laughs> I'm I going to college to with them. They don't know this. But when they exactly. go to college, I'm going. That was my mom. She was like fully there. Um, so my mom got really, my mom got sick. And oh, my girlfriend, uh, Tanika, was the host of the show. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, Dee, like you have to, you have to try out for Design Star. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like my mother's dying. Like she was like, just do this. This will be something to focus you to like, yeah, right. you know, I was always like, I'm always a student at heart, right? So I was like, okay, I can follow That's the recommendations, the you know? And so I just got into that student mode of like, all right, do the application, you know, do the little video. And yeah. like, I, I just started to like it. Um, during the process, my mom passed away, which is crazy. So I found sorry. out like the next day I got on the show, it was just like this whirlwind. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But I wound up like two months later in LA, which was such a good, it was just a gift at that time. Yeah, get away, like, not look at the house, not be aware of I was like her in that absence. house full of her stuff. It was winter in New York. It just w wouldn't have been good uh, for me emotionally. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> so just put the AC on. So I, I sort of stumbled. I mean, this is that's why I say the winding road. I, I don't really ever go into things intentionally. I have life goals generally, but I don't like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. go on a like a path of like, I have to get this by this time. It's just like, when things come up, I pay attention and I, you know, I respond. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the best I got. <laughs> I feel like in doing these interviews with designers, it totally is two camps. It's people uh, you know know from the get-go and are going out after it and then people who like the universe really wants to pull them into the design profession and as as much as they may not be pursuing it it comes for them and it's really it's really beautiful to watch that that happen because you know, you just, you think of all the people we know who have jobs that they hate or they're just doing it to pay. And, and yeah, I mean, of course you have to, you have to support yourself. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, where, when you find people who are, you know, they can't escape their destiny and then they succeed, it's thrilling. Yeah, to that point, um, I mean, I've wanted to quit so many times, as you know, like the business of the, the business of it is, can be harrowing. Ooh. So, this is now that you've said that I have to to put this on the questionnaire. Yeah. Um, if you quit tomorrow, what do you think you could do? Well, my fantasy is to like move to the south of France and you know write a novel or. You know, well, can I come with you? Like, can I be your copy editor? <laughs> yes, I will come and help with um, punctuation and grammar. Oh my gosh! Absolutely, please. I'm down. I'm down. No, I mean let's sign. <laughs> 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 My lawyer right now is like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so, are you a good writer? Yeah, I enjoy I enjoy writing. I I was an anthropology major, so um, and African American mm -hmm. studies. I a lot of political science. So I at the end of my college years, I wrote thirty papers a quarter. You know, it was yeah. like, well, there's no yeah. there's no shortage of things to be writing about in that in that field too. Um, exactly. Everything is so meaningful. You know, it always is, but it, you know, it, it feels like it's getting increasingly more urgent and emergent. Yeah. And I, I just feel the connection because people always ask me, like, how did you study that? And it's like, again, I studied what I was interested in, what I didn't learn in high school. Like I tried to fill in gaps. Um, a liberal arts education at that point was still like, <laughs> you know, like, a great thing. I mean, it still is a great thing, no, but you know, people yeah. are more practical now, but it was I, well, still... I was saying to my husband just mm -hmm. last night, um, I don't, Oh, we were watching the news and it was, they have a segment called kids under pressure. And I was like, first of all, that's a terrible title. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's so yeah. sad. But so I was talking about college and expenses and 
And um, we were just saying, you know, paying for your child to have to have that room in college, if you can afford it or assisting it, whatever, mm -hmm. there is no greater gift. Oh, it's, I mean, it's just so important socially. And then. And you have other I, interests besides what you do to make money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was so lucky because I think my mother just didn't know enough to say, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, what are you going to do next? So mm -hmm. I never had that burden. I mean, I feel I was like very kind of ignorant about actually like what the next things were. I just knew I was in college and I was excited to study what I was interested in. And yeah. I feel lucky to have been there during that point where there wasn't all of that. Right. Pressure, you only go to an right? engineering college or only learn how to code. Whatever yeah, that is. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> like everything has to be this, this straight line. And I think it just does a disservice to everybody who knows where their path is going to lead yeah. them. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I love to write. Um, I don't do enough of it. I need to do more. Uh, but at some point there will be <laughs> there will be a book. That's one of the life goals. So. So, yeah, you need mm -hmm. to do a book. I don't even know why. Why? I mean, I kind of want to hang up this and <laughs> get on the I have a wonderful literary agent that I will introduce mm -hmm. you to after. Oh my gosh. Oh after my this. He, no, he's great. And um, yeah, the world needs to hear from you. Um, oh, that's wonderful. So once you went on Design Star and mm -hmm. you won, mm -hmm. I mean, what was that like? It was surreal. So it, here's uh, I mean, a, watching those shows, there is an element of, of unreal, unreality um, to yeah. them because you've got these incredible time crunches and the structures aren't real. Um, and you're doing all this DIY, which, like, let's be honest, we don't do that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, nobody wants to be DIY. Correct. Like, I, I was okay because I'd spent my childhood painting my house a million times mm -hmm. with my mom, but you know, it's and moving not really that bed around <laughs> and moving things around. So I'm like, I'm the installation girl. Like, I'm I'm the one like lifting things. You know, yeah, the movers cool. are like, sit down. You know, yeah. all the time. Um, so that part was fine, but it was it really intense. I was dealing with like tremendous grief. And then, you know, I was up against another designer and she definitely fit the profile more of what I thought they were looking for. And Dare so, I you ask? Know, right be what was that? Dare I ask? No, she's, she's a great designer, but I, but I definitely thought like TV, she's like beautiful and blonde and like, you know, and I just was like in this like, you know, so you were a beautiful brunette then. I was a beautiful brunette, yes, with uh, with long hair at that point. Uh -huh. um, but I just, I didn't think that I was what they were looking for. So I sort of had a talk with myself of like, it's okay, like you did great. You're going to go out there and it's going to be fine. And they call my name and like you see the screens with like your picture everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it's true. Like it was a dream. It was absolutely crazy. And then I got to do um, five episodes of my show, which I really love doing. Um, and I sort of, I mean, the TV bug, it's still there. Um, there's something about like being present. Mm -hmm. you know, speaking to the camera and I can talk about design all day long. So like all of those things together made it just feel really serendipitous. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do think TV, what's interesting, what's really interesting about TV for a designer is that our product takes so long to get to. Mm -hmm. And with TV, you, or I mean, I'm sure there are many other disciplines, but, but one that can be combined with design is you you leave for the day and you have accomplished something that day yeah. it's done it's in the can you no longer have to worry about it yeah i mean that's sort of fundamentally where i feel like design and tv don't really realistically melt and that's sort of my issue with it it's it's that no i don't mean you've done something in terms of you've created an interior i mean oh, yeah, you yeah, filmed yeah. You filmed, you spoke, you filmed, yes. you're out. Yes, exactly. But like in terms of like the nitty gritty of what, I don't think, first of all, our timelines and like the the amount of details <laughs> and the yeah. amount of things that go wrong on every single project. Um, I know they, they would not have to import the drama. They just would be like, <laughs> like turn it off. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no, horrible. no, I think that kind of drama would is what they're looking for. Yeah. But um, it's interesting that those shows don't want to necessarily 
watch that long transformation. I guess yeah. it's just too, too dull. Yeah, it, it's, and yeah, when I did my show, I mean, we were doing like five at once. So we sort of had some, That's some great. leeway, but it was, it, it was really fun. And I think that was great because I had my focus, which was like, using an object in your home that's inspiring basically saying like everybody can find inspiration in their home yeah everybody has something their grandmother and, yeah vase whatever it is and you can design around that like that can be your starting point how far after your mother's death was the was the finale and you won and not even it was like six months not even i'm glad though i am uh, I mean, I, I really, I feel like that show was a blessing. Like it really, at that time, I needed that like thing to focus on. I needed that creative, that sort of like forced oh, yeah. creative space because no project would have given me that intensity. Um, so it was, it was a great thing. And right now, what are you doing that you're loving? Oh my gosh. I, I have so many great projects. I mean, the great thing about yeah it's it's uh COVID has been Here's very cheers right um i think it's been great for our industry in so many ways just because people have literally i know which is which i hate saying but you know like how can how can anything you know you you hate to think of anything that you can point to and say oh it's great yeah. when people are dying it's but it, it, the, it's, the home it's, the home has become this incredibly important space and I think the thing we've been saying forever, this is your sanctuary, this is the place to put your energy. I think, you know, as a culture, we're so focused outward. Um, you know, and of course we work in a material business. It's not about, you know, but we're so focused on like looking great, being out in the restaurant, you know, the, the life outside yeah. that we were all forced to kind of literally go inside and be and see what we had cultivated there. And a lot of people were like, okay, <laughs> I need yeah. to, you know, like I need to- I need to up my game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think it's been, it's been great. I, I, people are really, I think adventurous. I'm, I'm, my clients are great. Um, you know, I'm really like aligning in a much better way with people. I'm much more Ooh. honest about how I work and like what I believe right from the beginning. Good. I don't know. There's what, something like, give me, give me some changes because I was, um, I interviewed somebody a few weeks ago, this amazing woman named Jean Brownhill. And she was saying who's that a friend she, who's a very good friend. I mean, life. she's astonishing. Amazing. Actually, I'm going to, I was thinking, I want to call her up and, and, um, ask her what are some of the interview questions that mm. she does with her client base to align them with the contractors. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, we all could use a polish. So mm -hmm. it sounds like you did dust things off um, in how yeah. you talk to your clients. So what, wh what things did you change and how did you change them? Please, God, tell me. <laughs> well, I, I basically, I just said, you know, I care more about getting you the right thing than getting it to you fast. There's not going to be a big reveal. Um, it will take time. It's yeah. better to work in a process and make the right choices and slow it down. Yeah. Uh, it's too expensive to get wrong. It's too expensive and it's, you know, when you rush it, and, you, you know, I get the, the, like having the whole scheme, that's great. But, you know, I said to them, we're going to have a vibe and we're going to build, <laughs> you know, and I'm just much more honest about how, the time it takes. Um, you know, I'm going to give you at our first design meeting, we're going to have a direction and an overall, you know, look for the space, but it's going to build and evolve because mm -hmm. we're just going to see what works best. Yeah. And I don't want to rush that. And that's a little bit tough to deliver to New Yorkers <laughs> right. who are like, let's go like yesterday. Um, but I think it's important to say, and I think COVID has given us a bit of an opportunity to say something like that because people are, are more open to it. Like, and they value the, the end result more yeah. now that they've had to, to be at home. And I, I also talk a lot about, you know, everyone says, you know, do you do high, low? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. But I also, it's more about old and new, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I really make sure that everybody knows, like, you have to have pieces with history. Like, if not, your space is going to feel like a showroom, and we don't mm -hmm. want that, right? Um, we're very lucky, I think, that COVID, I mean, again, 
nothing lucky about COVID. Mm -hmm. um, there are, you know, if we were in a minimalism, all beige, um, 2002, right. three moment when this hit, it would be very different. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, the fact that, that people do want more and more personal is just the perfect counterpoint to being stuck at home. Exactly. Do and you there, have an there, office out of the home normally? I do. So, um, are you going to keep it? I'm, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's important. I worked uh, for a long time at home, but mm -hmm. then, you know, as I said, <laughs> my aforementioned children right. who, who are wonderful, but you know, just having that, that space to focus and, I actually am in a, a an office where Jean is is taking a desk as well, so we've been seeing each other more. Um, but basically, we've had this huge architectural. I, I just had a desk during this year. Um, so I love that whole notion, problem. by the way. I what? had a, the first time I heard about someone having a desk somewhere mm -hmm. was it someone at Solomon Brothers or no, mm -hmm. no Lehman Brothers, and something had gone poof. And mm -hmm. so he had left Lehman and it, it sounded like a very guy thing. Like he was very sanguine about the whole situation. He was like, oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm going to get a desk with this guy. And I was like, what do you mean you're going to get a desk? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and that is something that I think everybody needs to, to think about who doesn't have an office. You, yeah. you just get a desk with somebody else at their office. And it's, um, it's a great, it's a great way to, to leave your house, but also to have, some sociability exactly. during your work day. Yeah, and, and mine, I mean, I was really in there alone in like, you know, a several thousand square foot huge office and nobody was going in. So it actually was pretty, you know, pretty safe. And so it, it's been, <laughs> it's been great. At some point I will, I'm sort of exploding, you know, um, because designers have stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, architects are very like, so I'm sort of exploding in my corner. So at some point I'll yeah. need to, you know, you might need two desks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're sort of, we're like encroaching on the yeah. other spaces. So. But it was um, really, really good during this time. So the projects that you're working on, give me, give me a range. Give me, give me the two opposite projects you're working on. Oh, I, I have a really good two opposites. So one is um, a townhouse on Lex. Mm -hmm. and super colorful, fun, amazing, amazing art. Um, cool. The client sort of after George Floyd came to me and was like, look, I like, I want your help. I want to collect more African-American and African artists. Like, I don't want to be like pandering, but like, you know, this is important to me. I want yeah, to yeah. support. And I was like, I'm your girl. Let's do it. May I ask, was that a white person? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, like very good conversation, very open, honest. Um, he was like, you know, I don't want to be douchey here, but like, yeah, I, I can expand be, my horizons. Support. Will you help me? Exactly. Like, I don't know this for and I was like, I got you like, let's do it. So the art collection that we're building is like, it's so fun. I love this part of it. It is just so fun. And we're discovering all these new people. And now we're into photography. So and that one is like, they've actually pushed me color wise. Um, mm -hmm. I sort of have like my- They sound amazing. They're fantastic. They're really like, uh, my husband is the contractor on the project, which is- oh, very, very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> As he well, tells, I mean, yeah. Good and going. He's, he's very fresh. Way to think ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really like, we, we were introduced that way. So, so I think nice. it was a setup. Yeah. And he's fantastic. He's such a, he's French. So he just has that innate like artistry in him. Mm -hmm. So he approaches things and the details really matter to him, yeah. which is like so lovely. Oh, so yeah. lovely from, a, you know, where he'll call me and be like, did you mean for? <laughs> yes, you know? for this to like, die yeah. into nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, though you have to wonder what people are thinking when they decide to be a contractor. I, I can think of no, I mean, yes, I can think of more thankless jobs, but that, that is definitely up there for tough. Yeah. So is he a little crazy? No, so the <laughs> thing, he's super chill. And I think that's why people really like him because like the ceiling will fall. He'll be like, we'll deal with it. 
You know, he's like the antithesis yeah. of Takes New the York. air out of the balloon. <laughs> yeah. It's he's just like, it's a pro we'll solve it. He doesn't get into the story. I mean, we have, so the, the other project is a, a penthouse in Dumbo and we're combining two apartments and it's like full Scandinavian, pretty much like cool. white and grays and like, you know, not, it, it's just like minimalism, clean. And How uh, cool to do the two at the same time. It's so fun. And, and I just feel like we just can't be pigeonholed. Like I like, I like mm. everything. I really like everything. I mean, it's not how I live. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a yeah, little yeah. more You're living vicariously. But I, I love it all. Like, I'm like, Japanese, design, let's go, Scandinavian, mm -hmm. like, all of it. And then the full, like, English, I'm <laughs> like, I'm yeah, down. Yeah, uh, Irvine right. and Fleming. Um, uh, do you ever cheat on your husband and use another contractor? Yes, but usually. <laughs> <laughs> not, to, just... not to a good result? No, I, I, I have. You know, at this point, I think this is a, I don't know, I'm in my mid 40s now. And so I'm, I'm just, I remember when I was 10, my mom turned 40. And at that point, she was like considered an old mom, right? Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. in the 80s, like that was like in the 80s, I was like, ooh, the yeah. old mom, right? But I remember her telling me, just wait till your 40s. It is amazing. You're going to love it. It's the best. And I was like, you know, what is she talking about? Yeah. Um, and it's true. I think like, I don't know, as a woman, like being in my 40s, I just have a different, a different perspective on everything and mm -hmm. a different comfort level with, uh, with things. So at this point, the, the vendors I work at, I sort of have like a no a-holes like policy. I don't love that. I, I deal with, uh, with great people who are loyal and who I know are going to bend over backward like if it's not done right I'm not gonna like lose it but like let's yeah, make it just right. fix it because yeah. things will go wrong everything will go wrong <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> everything will go wrong. it's interesting what you just said about um your being in your 40s I too I'm about to check out of my 40s but I'm still in my 40s and um I I love tv I love movies like I'm a total movie-aholic and um you know, just this weekend, I was watching the Disney live action Cinderella movie. And my daughter came in. She said, what are you watching? And I said, Cinderella. And she rolled her eyes. Um, but so many of those women's stories that people in our generation have ingested mm -hmm. end at 40. You know, you, you find the man and you mm -hmm. have children. Or yeah. you, he finds you and you get married. And what is so exciting... I think about being in my 40s and, and further is this is uncharted territory. Yeah. We don't have a template because they forgot all about us. I mean, it, it's a yep. good thing. It's not mm -hmm. bad that, that, you know, I think men have all these stories of going into their dotage as titans and mm -hmm. you know, whatever they think they have to be or athletes and they, and they lose it when it, when that doesn't happen. Like it makes them nuts, but we don't have, you know, nobody bothered <laughs> to right. give us the so script. True. So yep. we are free to write whatever we want. Well, what's so I watch a lot of European movies for mm -hmm. that reason. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, that they treasure the older woman. It's, it's amazing. And they're in these yeah. positions of power and there's no thought about it. And they're, naturally aging and they're they're not you know especially in french movies their faces yeah are like, like isabel these, like, the, yeah crazy, oh charlotte crazy. rampling the most gorgeous i mean gorgeous gorgeous young yeah. gorgeous wrinkled mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. and i watch, i was watching a finnish show and too like the old all these women's in position of power that are just like oh she's the chief of police here and it's just not a thing. And uh, yeah. we just don't have that in our in our culture the same way. Yeah, though I feel like um, advertising right now uh, is, is helping lead the way. You know, every commercial yeah. I see, they show um, men living together and doing the laundry. They show mm -hmm. uh, couples that are black and white or black yep. and Asian. Mm -hmm. And I think, I feel, and I don't feel like that just started. I feel like that started a while ago. And I feel like they're at the vanguard. Yeah. Making us see things and, and making it a completely usual. 
Right. Just, Normalizing yeah. these things. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I sort of feel that way about my path, right? Like a biracial girl from Queens who's, you know, I'm, I'm funny, but I'm not like the sidekick funny, you know, there's not like a lane That's for me. me <laughs> right? Uh, you, you're, wait, you're the, Laurel and Hardy, you're Laurel. I'm perfect. Hardy. Perfect. Yeah, I will. I'll be the one laughing at all the jokes. And, and um, yeah, so there was not a lane for me that I saw growing up. You know, I got it was very yeah. like black world, white world. And my mother was white. And she was very much like you are a black woman. This is how you're going to be treated. This is what you do. Like she was very, but she wasn't also prepared for the nuance of, of, the, of all of it. And I just I'm happy for our kids now that are you know, that are seeing that there are so many, I mean, I'm in Brooklyn, I'm like in the, the land of everybody is mixed. And, yeah, yeah. you know, everybody I think Brooklyn, like, I think they statistically have the most varied population yeah. of any city, part of the city. I don't remember yeah, what it's Queens before. does, too, Queens is pretty, I mean, I grew up in Queens too. Yeah. So I, I'm used to like all of my neighbor, everybody, each neighbor was from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so I just I will like claim that. Queens for my husband who is Greek. I oh, will yeah. I will claim Queens for the Greeks. <laughs> yes. Yes, the Greeks have their corner, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, it's interesting all of these things and it and hearing you talk about your project on Lexington, it is making us, especially Eurocentric people like me, or even like when you were saying Irvine and Fleming, um, push the boundaries of what we're familiar with yeah. to enrich our design to make it more mm -hmm. beautiful and and discover more. Yeah. And you know, you can pair it, you know, I'm pairing it with De Gournay and with Fromentel, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pairing it with these very classic things. So, you know, that's like, you know, that's what my mother taught me. It's about that mix, right? Like the Italian modern sofa with, you know, yeah. Haitian art. Like that to me is, like that's perfection. I love that. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it creates tension. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, do you this is a, a new? Oh my god! I'm just looking at my percentage. I might have to plug in something. <laughs> okay. Um, um, do you like? What are some of the philanthro philanthropic activities that you pursue? Is that sentence. Well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I participated in the Ronald McDonald, the Ronald McDonald House two times. Um, it was so crazy the first time. They gave me seven rooms. I don't know what, what? I was. They gave me like all the laundry rooms, all of the all of the, like the powder rooms and this little telephone room. And I crazily said yes and somehow did it. I have no idea. How did you get that straw? That that just I guess Oh we got to We got to ask the Kravitz that one. <laughs> I, well, they, whatever the Kravitz do, I'm, I'm in good. for. Yes. They, I no, worship it, it at the, was, at the it altar. It was a really, it was wonderful, actually. It wound up, it was intense, but it was, it was a beautiful thing. Um, and it's funny because I grew up not far from Long Island Jewish, where that is. So yeah. it just was like, it was nice to be, be there. And then at, um, the year after, I did a room with Drew McGookin and Young Ha. Yeah. Um, with our Hunt Sloanum bunnies everywhere. Yeah. And then I always, I try to do design on a dime sort of as much as I can. Right. I I just was speaking, yeah, I just had to say no to this year, but I promise I, I've offered myself for next year. That's, I did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. So let's do it the same year. Let's do it. Let's do it next. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So somebody saying the fish wallpaper they'll never forget was so good and that you rocked it. Do, I do feel like um, show houses more than, more than, you know, now more than ever because of social media mm -hmm. are a wonderful career boost. You know, you get, oh, yeah. you get the satisfaction of, of being a good person and doing wonderful things for a cause and also and rocking, it, rocking it out. Right. Yeah, doing something that, you know, maybe you wouldn't get approved <laughs> to do totally, otherwise. Totally, right? oh. totally. Um, um, yeah, I once did like a, a dark brown lacquered bedroom um, with a silver ceiling. I was like, nobody's asking me for this. Um, right. <laughs> what haven't you done, besides the book, which we're going to get you on momentarily, mm -hmm. um, what have you not done that you wish you've done or would like to do? Uh, I, I really would love to do product 
Mm -hmm. I would really love to do some furniture. I think, um, so because my mom passed and I have so much of her stuff, I'm really inspired by these kind of special pieces that I think everybody should have. Like, I'm really like vitrines. Like, I, I like to have the of a vitrine I that I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to give you the benefit of the doubt on this, but I live in a pretty vitrine free zone. But if <laughs> you say it's a great vitrine, okay. Well, I, I saw this one in a jewelry store and I was like, Ah, interesting. Totally yeah. rethought. Um, but anyway, I do have a lot of clients who are like, I have the paperweight collection. And I'm like, throw it out. <laughs> and they do not thank me. Yeah. <laughs> My husband, he loves like little, like, you know, we went to Thailand, little figurines yeah. and carvings and that kind of stuff. Um, so he's always intent on building us a vitrine. I'm like, okay, put your money where your mouth is. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I would love to do sort of a vintage inspired collection, you know, that has some of yeah. those elements that, but that's accessible to people. I think that would be great. Um, a book for sure. I would also love to do like a boutique hotel. I think that would be. Right. I mean, is I, that not I want some smart person <laughs> to get a huge boutique hotel and hire all of us <gasps> to do one room. One room. And obviously we, you know, we won't want to be like the loser. Who right. doesn't bring it so oh, i think yeah. it would just create the most dynamic yep. um somebody's just saying be blow <laughs> for the vitrine <laughs> um but yes we have to like where is the person who's going to do this for us because we will we happen. will bring it we will make it amazing we will that will be the show house to end all show houses yeah basically. it put us on the beach and i think we'll be uh we'll be happy mm -hmm. Or, or, yeah, sent back to the south of France for you. Or, uh, yeah. or Paris. I could do Paris. I can do Paris, too. My, yeah. Probably my favorite city. Well, you know, I, can I, do, I can't um, say New York. I have, I mean, it's, you know, it's in me. It's, it's my I city. Have, I'm dying to go to Egypt, so I say we go to <laughs> Egypt, too. Oh, um, yeah. Have you been to Africa? I have. I, I did a semester in South Africa, and wow. so I was um, there. My in husband in lived there. 96. It's crazy. Oh, it's wait crazy. a minute. Yeah, apartheid like ended in 94. Okay. <laughs> so it was, my mother yeah. was like, you're doing what? But it was yeah. amazing. What? I was at what, university. Um, it was fantastic. That would have um, scared me regardless of my color, but especially, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, it was an incredible. So South Africa and I spent Christmas in Zimbabwe that year, which was mind blowing because I had never, I mean, I've been to the Caribbean and places that are predominantly black people, but to be in a country like Zimbabwe and like everybody, it, you know, like you just don't understand the shift in the feeling. I, I, I don't. I cannot imagine. It's, it's mind blowing. I can't it's, imagine not having that every day. Right. It's it. You know, and I would like see a white person be like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Like, who am I? But it was it was yeah. such a shift to, you know, to realize like what we live in is as a, as minorities, especially in America, yeah. and like constantly being aware of our surroundings. Yeah, I think the the one time I had that experience was in China, oh, and yeah. it was it was not in Beijing. It was in a, a you know a less visited area, and I think I was wearing it, you know, huge shoes you know i was probably clunky around six feet tall huge loud american yeah. and P and i do not feel that i was well received <laughs> i feel like right. definitely pointing on the streets and you know like, like yeah, watch had of... gotten loose um so <laughs> oh yeah. and the blonde hair too yeah yeah just I mean, everything you know, I'm, I'm glad I, was, I did not have the pink glasses happily but yeah it was it was really a um a learning moment for me i was like this is good to know yeah, it's, I'm it's, not I think it's really, I sort of wish Americans would put themselves in that position because I think it's really eye opening mm -hmm. to flip that and to just say, oh my gosh, the bus drivers, every postman, everybody is African, everybody is, is from Zim. Like, that's mind blowing just what it does. It, it's just such so a So our hotel needs to be in Africa. Oh, yes. Let's... Oh my gosh. Senegal, can we do like the coast? Yeah. 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 Um, Right. Yeah, Senegal. That, and I mean, if we're down. in Senegal, then we, you know, traveling available to us all within proximity. 
and we can <laughs> practice our French. We can work on French, which I will always love. So I was speaking French this morning. I was very excited until I like totally forgot how to construct a <laughs> sentence. So <laughs> well, um, my in-laws, my in-laws speak no English, so I get thrown oh, in. Are, the are, are they're French. Oh yeah, my husband oh, is is from Brittany, and uh, my kids both under they understand both. But my in-laws, it's there's no there's no English, so. That's great. So somebody's already, already saying they would love uh, our boutique hotel in Africa. Yes. I oh, really, yeah. I think we no, need to do this. Except, except you know that everyone in Africa will be like, well, why would we be hiring Americans? <laughs> totally. Um, so we'll have to figure out how to insinuate ourselves. Well, we'll, we'll just use, I mean, there's so many great artists doing amazing. So we'll just say, like, we'll just use all, like, local art. Totally. That will be totally. our yeah. That will be our in. That will be our in. And local, then we'll, I'm local vendors, my... local. I mean, that would yeah. be insane. That would be insane and fabulous. I love these ideas. And good for the world. Yes, exactly. Wouldn't you love it if everybody was like, instead of Paris or whatever, everyone was like, yeah, I'm going to Senegal. Right. I would love it. Like, of course. Yeah, I would. I, I would love that. I would yeah. love if people knew the names of country. You know, like there are just like things that we've just gotten so conditioned. Um, and I think you know, in in my uh, days of African American studies, I was uh, pretty like you know rah rah. Yeah. I would yeah. come home and be like, "Mom, you just don't understand." You know. Well, like, I think we. I think we all did that. Yeah, and, and she was like, "I was in an interracial relationship in the '70s. I have a little bit of a clue." Right. <laughs> Okay, fine. Okay, so boutique hotel, book, book. product, mm -hmm. and not without saying the White House, because everyone answers the White House. What other big thing do you, I, I'm a big believer in like saying these things out loud in case somebody hears us and doesn't realize that we're all chomping at the bit to do something. Right, exactly. To <laughs> what, do something. What, what else, what's a project that you really would like to do that's, that you could do? You know what you know what I love right now. I just feel like there are so many young women artists, actors, uh, Zendaya, Yara Shahidi, mm -hmm. these like Zendaya. activists, young women who are just doing like they're just so authentic. Like I feel like they're where I am. You know, they're in a place where I am now, where it has taken me like twenty years of, right. of self help work to get to. Like they're really just like living these really lovely lives. I would love to work with people like that. Um, you know, where it's, I don't know, it's just that kind of, I, I want that clientele that it's like, yeah, we just work together forever, you know, and we just, oh, you know, yes. I do, I'm sorry, two, I'm getting what you're saying. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yes. you do a few so projects you, a year for like a few Givenchy great to Audrey Hepburn, you'd be Zendaya's house designer. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. I'm putting it out there. I'm just saying. Put it out there. <laughs> um, I'm like, damn, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love, I just have such respect for her. And Yara Shahidi, too. Like, I just feel like yeah. these young girls, they are just making me so proud. And they're brilliant. They're brilliant and they're activists and they're yeah. not afraid to be themselves. And it's, uh, it's beautiful. And they're not embarrassed by their no. ambition. No. And they don't let the story be told about them. I mean, I feel like I'm learning so much from that and I'm coming into that. Um, but they're there and it's, I'm like, let's raise them up. That's great. Yeah. Well, I'm looking, okay, we're 153. We've got seven minutes and 17%. Per so okay. I think we can, I think I can make it through. Okay. If for some try. reason it clicks off. Oh no, I can't let it click off because then I will lose this video. Um, it, which I cannot have. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, I think another another really wonderful thing is we should have a party for. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll have a fifty-two weeks party <gasps> after we open up, and where we can all meet and have these conversations, like in person, oh my and, gosh, I and try and that. make something happen. I um, would all of my idols in one space. I would just like die. And likewise. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think you did have me at your home for a, uh, it was a dinner. It was like a for, design. Yeah, for the uh, shade store. It was for the shade store. Yeah. And it was like, I, ju I just automatically felt very comfortable with you. So I just want to thank you for that too. There's a now a dog around. So it, everybody will feel very comfortable. <laughs> yes. Like, 
<laughs> it's gone to shit. Um, but yeah, it can't be there because there would be too many of us. Too I don't think 52 us. will fit very well in there. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Um, but um, I, I think we are all such a great industry that mm -hmm. um, Oops. But haha, -ha, I'm not home. <laughs> um, I I think in in the the spirit of everything that's happening in our world right now, and and having a new president and wanting to have the, the disease behind us, and um, yes, everyone gets 20 minutes with my not my publisher, my literary agent. He will get you the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, I I think it's time that we really work together more. Like we all love each other, but we yeah. need to figure out a way where we can actively help support each other going forward. Yeah. But I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, it's tough because, you know, it, it requires a lot of self-reflection and that's really not the fun part, right? Like <laughs> the we really have to like look at the ugly things. We have to look up the, lift up the rock and like see where the unpleasant yeah. things are. and. If we do that and do that work, we will, you know, and I feel like that is the work I did over the past five months. I lifted up the rock and I looked at the stuff and I got the help I needed and I started meditating. You know, I did that stuff, but I feel like we need to do that as a culture, yeah. you know, and we need and, to persist and we, with that. And we start in our backyard, which is Absolutely. us in the industry or we, it is we in the industry. Um, yeah. Somebody's saying, I think it's asking for help so we can help. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that there must be a project, maybe not a boutique hotel yet, or maybe yes. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's true. We might not create any value. But they're, they're, um, But I mean each other. I don't mean one person giving value mm -hmm. to the other. I mean back and forth. Exactly. I think there's a group project that we should establish. Mm -hmm. um, the boutique hotel relies upon somebody with, somebody, with, yeah. with yeah. some big pockets. But there must be something that we all can do together so so that we know each other better and that we can exchange um, all the things that one needs to exchange, especially you know women and in the in this industry and I think I love really that fun. idea I mean I've gotten so much i mean I call my designer friends all the time saying, too. like, oh yeah, I have to if not it's uh too daunting. You know, how do you yeah. bill for this? Or what happens when this, like, what, how do I solve this? Like, that's crucial. Um, I don't know if I would still be, you know, I, I think we just, yeah. we all need that. And we should just be open about that. We need that, in, that interaction. I was just talking to some students at NYSID. Uh, I, in this pop-up shop, I, it just occurred to me, I should be having NYSID students. So I called NYSID, mm. the mom whose board I serve, and said, let's make appointments for Saturday for students. Um, and I was, uh, the first thing I said to them was, Dr. Sofa and the Sofa Doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to need him at some point in your career. So, it's so don't true. forget. <laughs> don't forget him because it will forget. happen. It will definitely happen. It'll happen to you, but don't be ashamed of yourself. It has yes. happened to it us all. It happens to all of us, even several years in. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Danielle. Oh, you, you are amazing. We will definitely, I'll see, when, when, do, when do we get our shots? When do people in our bracket, when do we do it? Like May? Well, over 50, is happen over 50 is happening. So I feel like we're next. Um, okay. I'm hoping, I'm hoping soon. Um, me too. Yeah. Me too, before the other strain comes through to I, I just need to be okay for my kids, you know, like that's it. I yeah, guess it's like that has put everything into sharp focus, right? Yeah. Espe yeah, especially like I've gotta say three was a was a favorite year for me. I loved my kids when they were three. I hate them now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but three yeah. is really, really adorable. Yeah, it's it's really um, a good good age. They still love so mom. So have fun. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm going to post this before the battery dies. Okay. Mwah. All right. Thank you, love you. Dear. Love you too. Bye. Bye.